Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit, I'm CP and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Gilberto Oliva Reserve Blanc. As per usual, we'll be using the Bespoke Unit Cigar Formula, a quantifiable review matrix that you can use at home. Look in the description and you'll find a link that takes you to a guide which teaches you how to use it as well as provides you with links on some free downloadables. Also, I've been using the Bodo acrylic humidor that you can see behind me for storing these cigars for the last three weeks. I was using a 69% Bodo pack and I monitored them with a Bodo butler. In a previous video, we reviewed the Gilberto Oliva Reserva, which was the uh, original version in this initial lineup. Uh, the Gilberto Oliva, as I explained in that video, uh, was initially going to be called Facundo Oliva, but due to some copyright disputes, with Bacardi, they had to change it to Gilberto, which is another patriarch of the Oliva family. Um, it's a more affordable line. Uh, what was quite unusual about the original Reserva was that it used an Indonesian uh, wrapper. Uh, this one is actually a lot more uh, conventional. So the Reserva Blanc that I have in my hand is a 6x50 Toro and was assembled at the Tagabe uh, Taga excuse me. Tabacalera Oliva de Nicaragua SA, or Tabulosa for short. Uh, the bunching style is accordion, uh, made by hand. The wrapper is an Ecuadorian Connecticut, so quite a classic uh, choice there. The binder is Ecuadorian as well, and the filler is Nicaraguan. Presumably a very similar, if not the same, filler as the original Reserva. Uh, unfortunately, I can't give more information on that because it only or I only found out in my research that it was just Nicaragua. Jumping straight into the look and feel, here I have an unsmoked Toro. Uh, it's available in other Vitolas such as Churchill, Corona, Robusto, these are, and some of them also come with a sort of cedar sleeve as well. So the first thing I noticed with the Reserva Blanc was that the body was had a much better construction than the uh, regular Reserva. There are fewer soft spots, although there are a couple, they weren't quite as discernible, and the uh, spring was a little bit, was firm, I think, but I think the previous Reserva was firm as well. Its um, hue is this nice sort of cafe latte, but I say nice, but you can occasionally pick out a couple of bruises in the uh, in the wrapper, perhaps through uh, rushed fermentation, it doesn't give quite a sheen per se, but you can detect some oils through this haze of uh, shine that you get off the wrapper. Its veins are far more refined than the Reserva, which were quite coarse. I recall there were quite some big veins on the original Reserva. So in terms of presentation, I think this is a step above. As for the aromas, I've noted in the cigar formula that it delivers a combination of tonka bean, quite gourmand, some cinnamon and some milk chocolate, uh, a lot less bold uh, than the um, than the Reserva, which is to be expected. In terms of pre-light, uh, I found that the draw wasn't as tight as the Reserva. I had heard of there being some loose draws of this blend, but I didn't have that problem with any of the cigars I smoked, and I smoked three for this review. And in terms of aromas on the pre-light, uh, they were quite a um, expected extension of the uh, aromas of the, of the foot. Um, these consisted of cinnamon, buttercream and brioche, so quite a yeasty profile overall. Now let's talk about the palette of the cigar and how it smokes. So first of all, what's quite interesting is that when it's lit, it opens with a very bold Connecticut flavour, uh, which consists of cream and white pepper, it tingles the nostrils on the retrohale, but then it starts to die down and settle, and it is at this point it reveals notes of some green tea, some molasses, and some walnut. So you do have a, a certain nutty substance to it, but overall it's quite herbaceous and a little bit sweet. Interestingly, as I got to the transitional point, sort of the, the end of the first third, and then made, started going into the second third, the flavors really became mild. The body just dropped on the cigar as well. It just became an incredibly mild smoke, which was reminiscent of perhaps a Davidoff number no. two. But then, after a couple more puffs, and I'd say about, I don't know, an eighth of an inch, not long at all, it suddenly became bolder again, and started punching out these 
uh, outrageous flavours. Uh, the green tea and the herbaceousness had all but gone, and instead uh, I experienced some peanuts, and sp p particularly uh, peanut with skins on them, so there was a, a, a bitter quality to them as well. Uh, there was some brioche, so the yeastiness that was detected on the pre-light suddenly decided to come into the fore here, and there was some white pepper on the retrohale especially. So making my way from the second third to the final third, uh, it's, the cigar remained relatively consistent. There were no more surprises like what I experienced at the end of the first third. Uh, in terms of body, it stayed relatively the same. Uh, in terms of uh, strength as well. Instead, uh, in flavour though, there was a, a distinctive change and uh, the yeastiness of the brioche died down and instead gave way to a uh, rutbrod, which is uh, a Danish rye bread, a very dark, bold black bread as well as some salted caramel. And salted caramel was something that I could more or less pick out throughout the first and second third, but here it was particularly noticeable. And then into the nuttiness, so we've gone from walnut to peanut, but in the final third it was more reminiscent of pecan. Therefore I'd like to argue that this cigar is more complex than the Reserva. The Reserva I found to be relatively linear, it had some very discernible notes in there, but it didn't really give many nuances. On this occasion, it does provide nuances. You do have some interesting transitions, changes of flavour, and uh, a, a unique journey, but now I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, as for the mouthfeel, however, I found this to be quite coarse. Although there were some flavours that could be compared to cream, in terms of mouthfeel, it was very much absent. Instead, it was quite rough. Uh, it didn't really have the smoothness that you would expect from a Connecticut uh, wrapper cigar. And uh, this was also felt in the astringence and the palate stimulation. The overall balance of the cigar uh, lent very much towards the front of the palate. It, it, it almost tingled a little bit too much on, on the tip of the tongue, but never really made its way anywhere near the back. In terms of its uh, life cycle, uh, this was relatively developed, as I hinted in the complexity and through describing the different notes. There were lots of changes, and it is an interesting cigar. Uh, there, there are different notes that you're going to be taken on a journey, and you will experience something new uh, throughout your entire smoking experience. As for the finish though, it's quite fleeting. It doesn't last very long. It tends to fade away after not too much time. Um, you probably could use a, a nice uh, espresso just to cleanse the palate. You could probably marry a couple of lingering flavours there, but uh, you're not going to get much of it after the cigar has been finished. As for the residual scent in the room, now Connecticut cigars tend to be a lot milder and much more forgiving, uh, certainly on furnishings and uh, the cut and the curtains. However, I found this, given it was a little bit coarse, to not be quite as pleasant afterwards, uh, with when, especially when compared to something like a Davidoff Number no. Two, as I mentioned earlier, or J.C. Newman Brickhouse Double Connecticut, or even the Nub Connecticut. These are going to have a lot more fragrance to them after they've been smoked in a room. But where the cigar is particularly impressive is its construction. So although there were a couple of soft spots and I had heard about some loose drawers, the drawer remained consistent and provided just the right amount of resistance all the way through. The temperature was very cool and the backbone and the ankle of the burn were excellent. I had a very nice ash stack uh, a third of the way through, which you'll see in the written review, which is uh, in the description below, and it was solid. It didn't come off until I think I put down the cigar for a couple of seconds too long, and then in the next drawer it just plopped off. And I could see it coming, so I put my hand here, and it was hot, but it was solid ash. It's not flaky at all. And in terms of the burn angle, as you can see, it's quite straight, considering that I haven't touched this up at all. Moving now on to the experience of the cigar. So it uses the same design of the band, and if you've seen that video, you'll recall that I kind of found the this, this flat bottom a little bit disappointing because I quite like the sort of more classic style at the top, and instead of having Reserve Blanc sort of shoved in there, they could have perhaps included it in the uh, main design of the band instead, and then it would have had a much more perhaps premium look about it. Uh, on this occasion though, I feel that with the creamy colours and the brown, uh, with offset by the gold, it's much nicer than the regular Reserva, which is uh, red, and it looks a little bit cheap in comparison. As for the box, uh, the box is very similarly styled to the Reserva as well. It's reminiscent of a uh, Cuban cigar box in that it's made out of MDF cardboard that has been covered in uh, stickers and decorations uh, in a, a stylish and ornate manner. 
When it comes to the value of the cigar, it's just as good as the Reserva. Uh, the Reserva was cheaper, I think it was about 50 cents cheaper a stick. This comes in at about $7, I think, for a Robusto. That being said, if you go on some online retailers, because I want to stay brand agnostic, I'm not going to mention them, but a quick search and you'll find exactly who I'm referring to, uh, you can find these at a heavily discounted rate. I've seen a box of the uh, Churchills for around $69, so you're looking at about $3, $4 a stick, given that it's a 20 cigar box. When it comes to the occasion, this is going to be a little bit more versatile than the Reserva because of the band, it's a little bit better, pre the presentation is a little bit better. Uh, it's also a Connecticut, so it's more beginner friendly. So you could imagine taking this to a wedding. It'd be a great option because it wouldn't hurt your wallet as much. You could take a box along and let everyone have a try and uh, you wouldn't be crying in your car afterwards thinking, why did I give away so many cigars? I was way too generous. Otherwise, I wouldn't take it to a formal occasion. I wouldn't use it as a celebratory cigar. Uh, I would probably not take it to a cigar lounge there. I'd probably want to smoke a little bit, something a little bit more special, given the environment. But this is a great everyday smoke that you can enjoy, perhaps when you're doing other things. So like I said with Reserva, it's a great cigar for while you're working, while you're doing some gardening, while walking the dog. Uh, the exact same thing applies here, except in, on this occasion you'll be able to probably smoke it early in the morning if that's your thing. Finally, we're going to talk about the food pairings and uh, beverage pairings as well. That's in the bottom right hand corner of the cigar review. It's not scored and if you probably just about make it out because I'm running out of ink in my printer. So first of all, for food, I went for the most obvious thing I could think of, which was a nut mix. You know, a nice bowl of nuts where you've got peanuts, you've got walnuts, you've got uh, hazelnuts, you've got a more with maybe some dried fruit as well. That'd be absolutely fine with the cigar. It would go quite well with the flavors. Um, otherwise, perhaps go for milk chocolate, uh, given this is going to have some creamy flavours to it. The milk chocolate will then help improve what it lacks in texture and give you some um, lubrication to your palate, given that it is quite dry. Otherwise, one thing I thought about and I thought would be quite interesting would be a smoked salmon, uh, smoked salmon tartine. So uh, basically a slice of bread and smoked salmon on top. If you get, take, for example, some rugbrod, some black rye bread, you put a little bit of, you put a nice dog of butter on there, you put some salmon, a little bit of pepper, a drizzle of, uh, of lemon juice, that would be quite pleasant with the cigar. It would offer some acidity while also complementing its uh, yeastiness um, and some of that acidity could go well with the dry saltiness of this cigar. As for beverages, uh, if you recall in the reserve I talked about Pilsner and Real Ale. In this case I'd say an ale, uh, perhaps an IPA or something that's quite heavy in hops that would offer you some well needed refreshment while you're smoking it. Otherwise root beer if you're looking for a non-alcoholic choice. I'm really fond of root beer with cigars and I think this would be a good pairing here as well. And uh, finally a cappuccino, the creaminess again would help uh, enforce and improve the cigar's overall experience. So that's the Reserva Blanc, and that's all from me today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, like, subscribe. We've got lots, lots more cigar reviews coming out, as well as other men's lifestyle content. And until then, head to bespokeunit.com and see all the other men's lifestyle subjects that we cover. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.